Hi, I'm Greg Carrick, and this is another unboxing video. Here's the box I got. Came uh, express post today, and if I think it's what I think it is, then uh, this box is a bit of overkill. So we'll see. Get your box cutter to cut open a box. The box looks good. It's not crushed, no dents, nothing. So it's been looked after in transit, which is very good. And inside, I've got uh, brown paper, always important. Uh, the invoice. And, lo and behold, in the box is this. <coughs> this is what I was after. This is a macro extension tube. It's uh, a genuine Fujifilm one, because I'm going to use it on my Fujifilms. There are other aftermarket, other brands uh, that are actually cheaper, do the same thing. But I just wanted that surety, you know, uh, of the, the quality that you get with Fujifilm. So this is called the MCEX-11 because it's uh, an 11mm extension tube. They make a 16, but... Uh, I think for my purposes, doing macro work, 16 was a bit too close. So in this box, which came in that big thing, we've got the uh, a warranty booklet. No one ever reads these things, honestly. And then, uh, wow, multiple language uh, of uh, both the MCEX 11 and 16. No one reads them either. What else? Another bit of paper. Ah, no one reads them. Now we get to the meat of the matter. This is the macro extension tube. And uh, as you can see, it's beautifully finished. Typical Fujifilm thing. Looks basically like the same metal and construct as the end of their XF lenses. Uh, it's got all the connectors. That's what I wanted. I, I didn't want a, a dumb tube. I wanted a smart one, one that will actually talk between the lens and the camera. So uh, that's a, a plus. Okay, I'm going to put this on my uh, Fuji's. Try it with different lenses just to see which Fujifilm lenses work well with it. Uh, and which are pretty average, okay? So I'll get back to you on that. Okay, to try out the extension tube, I'm set up here with my uh, very cheap homemade light box. Uh, and the first one I'm going to try it on is the Samyang 12mm wide angle. And the reason I'm doing this is I haven't seen anybody else uh, do this with the Samyang before, use the extension macro tube. So I'm just going to uh, try it and see. It is a prime lens, uh, so we'll just see how the 12mm handles having a macro extension tube. Uh, I'm using this on my X-T30. So simply uh, connect red dot to red dot, fits on like a normal Fuji lens. And again, red dot to red dot. Now the same young 12mm is on there with the extension. Well, I've got it on my, uh, the macro on my Samyang 12mm. And to be honest, you just watch the screen, you have to pretty well touch the lens with the object before anything comes in focus. It is uh, absolutely no good using the 12mm as a macro lens. So there you go. Now we all know. Okay, now I'm going to try the uh, macro extension tube. Still on my XT30, but this time with the 23mm uh, XF lens. This is the uh, F2 version. And uh, beautiful lens. I'm using it a lot more than I thought I would. It's also fully weather resistant, which is a great thing. So we'll try this with the macro, see how it goes, and I'll put up some shots for you.
Okay, as you can see from those shots, you've got a huge range of depth of field differences just by adjusting your aperture. Uh, I went from f16 down to f2 and the field of focus was uh, greatly reduced. So you really have to work at your aperture settings to get the best out of any of these macro shots. Okay, next prime lens I'm going to try with this from Fujifilm is the 56mm uh, 1.2, which is my favourite portrait lens. So, we're going to see how that goes with the extension tube. Once again, red dot to red dot. Clicks in nicely. And now we'll try the shots. Okay, as you can see from those shots, huge difference again from f16 down to on this 56mm, the 1.2. Uh, so if you want really thin slices of focus, wide open aperture, otherwise yeah, stop it all down to get more depth. And uh, worked very well though with the uh, 56mm, I'm pleased to say. Okay, now I'm going to try it on everybody's favourite kit lens, the 18 to 55 Very good quality lens this one uh, and one that a lot of Fujifilm users will have even if they don't have primes so we'll just see how this one operates with the macro extension tube well again those pictures are very tight aperture to fully open you can see the big difference in the focal length left there but also found in just playing with this because the zoom, I tried it on different zoom ranges, and it basically worked the best between 40 and 55 on this uh, 18 to 55 mil. So below that, uh, it wasn't a lot of use for this macro uh, work. Now one last lens I'll try is uh, the XC. It's a 50 to 230. If you saw my last video about these, great lens to buy on the cheap. Uh, and because I have it, I'm going to try it on this. I suspect it'll work the best around the 50mm range. So we'll see what it's like. Yes, yeah, so as you can see, uh, I had to leave it on 50 any uh, more zoom than that, and you just had to back away so far to get it in focus, it was much good. So if you do have one of these as your only lens, uh, it will work on the 50 with the macro extension tube. Not as good as the 18-55 uh, zoom though. Pew! 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 So there you have it, the uh, Fujifilm MX EX11 uh, macro extension tube. And after all that testing with different lenses, I recommend you uh, either use it on something like the 23mm, uh, which worked very fine on it, or the kit lens, the 18 to 55, works beautifully. And the whole uh, reason you would do this is because, uh, like me, you're on a budget. I don't do a lot of macro work, but when I do, I want a good macro uh, outcome. The extension tubes are about $100 Australian. I looked at the 80mm macro Fuji film lens, and that was about $1,500. So, for the small amount of macro work I do, uh, much better for me to buy the uh, macro extension tube. And uh, it is a genuine Fuji product. So you're still giving your money to Fuji anyway, uh, but uh, yeah, you're saving a lot of it for yourself, yeah.